north of Arkhangelsk, where the Panega River threads through endless spruce and the Mezen winds bite, live the Palmers of Panega and Leshikonsk, descendants of medieval Novgorod settlers who fused river life with the old finno ugric north. In these villages the seaborne Palmer spirit turned inland, men ferried timber and tar on flat-bottomed boats, trapped along winter trails, and traded deep into Komi country, women kept the hearth in towering log isbas and painted utensils with bold mezzan motifs, red deer, prancing horses, and sun signs that feel as ancient as the taiga itself. Their story is one of crossroads. With the Komi, they shared winter trade routes, borrowed words, crafts, and even kin, orthodox faith-binding communities where mixed marriages did happen, bringing Komi weaving patterns and reindeer goods into Pomer homes. From the Vepsians to the southwest came Echoes too, boat-building tricks for shallow rivers, wood-carving styles, and a Finnic cadence that still hums under local dialects. At 65 latitude north, just 70 miles shy of the Arctic Circle, Leshikonsk and Penega live under extreme skies. In December, the sun barely brushes the horizon for four or five hours a day, while in June the nights never come at all. These cycles carved deep into Pomer culture. The long dark winters turned villages inward, giving rise to rich storytelling traditions, epic byliney recitations, and long evenings of embroidery, wood carving, and song by the stove. Winter also became the season of weddings and communal feasts, when farm and river work lay dormant. Come summer, when daylight never ended, Palmer life flipped outward, endless fishing trips on the Panega and Mezen, timber floating, beekeeping, and river trade that could stretch far into the night without need of lanterns. The very rhythm of Palmer faith and folklore mirrors this cycle. Winter tales of spirits and protectors of the dark forest, summer rituals of light, water, and fertility. In many ways, the northern sky itself became the metronome of Palmer identity, marking when to gather, when to wander, and how to weave endurance and celebration into life on the edge of the Arctic. For this video, I gathered the raw genomes of 10 Pomers from Penega and Leshikonsk from Reichlab's ADR Plus.ho dataset. I ran them through Trait Predictor for DNA analysis to gather statistics on their health and phenotypes. According to FST analysis, Pomers from Penega were closest to Finns followed by Russians and Mordvins. The furthest groups from them were Denisovans, Africans, and Australians. Pomers from Leshikonsk were also closest to Finns, but after Finns followed Tatars, and only then Russians. Pomers of Leshikonsk were also most distant from Denisova, Africans, and Australians. The dominant Mesolithic component in Pomers from Penega was the Anatolian Neolithic farmer component, which comprised 29% of their genome. They had sizable contributions from the Iranian Neolithic farmers and Caucasus hunters too, the legacy of the Indo-Europeans. Penega Pomers scored 23% Eastern hunter-gatherer and 17% Western hunter-gatherer, which is high by Russian metrics. On top of that, they carried 12.4% Neo-Siberian ancestry associated with Uralic speakers. Leshikonsk Pomers have a slightly different breakdown. The dominant ancestral component in Leshikonsk Pomers is the Eastern hunter-gatherer component, at 27.7%. Although the Anatolian farmer component does come close at 26.7%, Leshikonsk Pomers have a higher Siberian contribution than Penega Pomers, at 15.5%. A medieval ancestry breakdown reveals that Penega Pomers are around 44% Slavic, 46% Uralic Iron Age inhabitant of the Volga, and 10% Karakaba Turkic. A medieval ancestry breakdown on Leshikonsk Pomers reveals they are around 40% Slavic, 44% Uralic, and 16% Karakaba Turkic. Now let's move on to their trait predictor results. Here is their average predicted phenotype. The most common predicted Y lineage was N, but there were two people with the Slavic R1A lineage and 1% with R1B lineage as well. The most common predicted phenotype was the Corded Nordid phenotype followed by Gorid one person scored the exotic Pamrid phenotype. The most common predicted eye color was blue, although there were people with darker eyes such as hazel or blue with amber center as well. Hair colors were split between brown and blonde. No sample scored black or red hair. Skin colors ranged from pale white to light brown. 
The most common predicted hair texture was wavy. Nose samples scored kinky hair. Six samples scored Greek nose shape and four samples scored snub. Almost every sample scored very high for the odds of male pattern baldness. The Pomers had very high odds of autism. LCT variants for lactase persistence were common among the Pomers. The Pomers had an average predisposition to empathy based on their OXTR genotypes. The Pomers had low odds of Tourette's, low odds of depression, and low odds of bipolar disorder type 1. The Pomers scored high for the odds of hemoglobin E disease, average for odds of Alzheimer's, and average for odds of type 2 diabetes. The Pomers scored high for the odds of atrial fibrillation, high for the odds of a wide range of cardiovascular issues, and average for the odds of syncope. The Pomers had an average predisposition to polycythemia vera based on their J, AK2 genotypes. They had very high predisposition to testicular cancer based on KITLG genotypes, which is a common tendency for Europeans. The Pomers had low odds of epithelial cancers. The Pomers were predicted to have high levels of LDL cholesterol, which is typical for Europeans. They were also predicted to have lower levels of good HDL cholesterol and average odds of allergies. Most Pomers did not carry risk variants for blue-yellow colorblindness in the OPN1SW gene, which shows that as a group, they likely had low odds of blue-yellow colorblindness. 9 out of 10 samples carried rare risk variants for various rare conditions. The most common condition to carry risk variants was Parkinson's. Not a single sample carried any hemochromatosis risk variants in the HFE gene. Hemochromatosis is often called the Celtic curse because of its prevalence in Celtic Europeans. The Pomers had a remarkably high predisposition to autoimmune disease based on HLA genotypes. I did not expect this. This implies that the Pomers have elevated odds of such conditions as type 1 diabetes, multiple sclerosis, and rheumatoid arthritis. Most of the Pomers sampled had either blood type A or B. You can purchase their genomes from the link in description. Links to my products and services will also be in the description.